This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. From the launch your online shop stage, all the way to the we just hit a million orders stage. No matter what stage you're in, Shopify's there to help you grow. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash special offer, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash special offer. Your day just got a whole lot better. You're listening to the Mutual Audio Drama Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. Welcome aboard the Transcontinental Terror Express, a special run on the Mutual Audio Railroad uh, Network. Get your tickets ready. Your conductor, Boris, is approaching. Tickets, please. Madam, you can't have that creature in here. You're frightening the other passengers. Our first stop is episode one of a five-episode miniseries of The Cellar. Yes, the show's hostess, Cadavra Quivery, is riding on this ferry train, and she'll introduce her ghastly tale of unnatural, uncontrollable fear. It's called Phobias Unlimited. Now, I'm not implying that fear of cats is unnatural, but you try being sealed up in a pyramid with 50 of them sometime. <laughs> they could have at least provided a scratch box. Our next stop features the gruesome gang from the mysterious old Radio Listening Society podcast. They've recreated an old-time radio program called Dead Men's Tales. Ooh, sounds intriguing already. Then we'll all be whisked aboard ship in the episode called Song of the Bittersweet. What? I'm going to hang ten. I'll hang eleven if I can find more rope. And then we're back on land with a double feature from playwright Ben Peel. Breakdown and The Cleansing. Ben Peel. Such an interesting name. Let's peel a little off the back. And our final stop is with Chronosphere Fiction and a tale of the supernatural by Mark Slade called The Ghost in You. Say, that reminds me of my favorite pickup line. <clears throat> Hello, you have everything I've been looking for. And believe me, I've been searching for centuries. <laughs> oh, you don't like that one. Well, how about, did you just fall from heaven? Because you remind me of Lucifer. <laughs> oh, oh, don't roll your eyes at me. I might step on them. Oh, that's our signal. We're pulling into the first stop. Hold on tight. This is not going to be pretty. What's wrong? I've got no idea, and now I'm soaked. How long until the breakdown service gets here? They said about half an hour. They always come quicker if it's a woman who's had one. Ha! I thought this was a shortcut. It was according to the sat-nav. I should have just gone back the way I came. Don't worry so much, Ella. Don't worry! It's the middle of nowhere and pitch black out there. Well... They won't be long, so all we have to do is sit tight here. (sighs) It's a foul night. I think it's easing off. I hope so. I had to crawl along at one point as it was lashing down so hard. Today seemed a success anyway. Yes, although it was an effort to get through it. It'll get better, and isn't it good to actually go in person to meetings at last instead of being on Zoom all the time? I quite enjoyed that. I need to physically be with people in a room, otherwise I just feel disconnected. I'm finding it hard to readjust to this new normality. You need to start going out a bit more and not stay cocooned at home. I'm not sure that I want to be amongst lots of people anymore. You weren't always like this. I don't know how you can be so optimistic. 
is still a beautiful world. Is it? I sometimes think we're being punished in some way. All those lockdowns felt like being banged up. I quite liked the slower pace of life. Anyway, the pandemic already seems to have been forgotten by some. Not by me. It's understandable though. People just want to get some normality back. All those lives lost can't easily be forgotten. I'm not saying they should be. But we have to go on living. You might have thought we'd have all learnt something from it. Like what? I don't know. To be more caring, kind and compassionate. And some people are. The pandemic has changed them for the better. But will it last? Yes, if we make an effort. Don't you want to connect with people again? I've made loads of connections with new people. I mean properly connect. You can't connect through a screen. I never want to hear, can you hear me? Or, you're on mute ever again. I need to be around people enjoying life in all its wonderful messiness. For a short while, it seemed like we might be able to find a better way of living. But now it seems more broken down than ever. Come on, that's a very pessimistic view. Try to look on the bright side. What bright side? You're alive, you've got your health and a good business. Yes, I have, but... What? Did you see that? See what? Something just appeared in front of the car. How do you know? I can't see anything. Oh, I don't know. I just sensed it. (laughs) You sensed it. (laughs) I think you're just letting your imagination get the better of you. Maybe I am. And you've not been sleeping well. Is it any wonder? I can't understand how the car broke down. It's always been so reliable. When did you last have it serviced? It's booked in for next week. It should have been sooner, but I've had a lot on my mind. It's most likely something simple that's easily fixed. I hope so. I wish my life was. Oh, there you go again with the doom and gloom. Don't you think I've got a right to feel like this? Yes, but you need to... Shh! Don't you shush me. Did you hear that? No. What? I thought I heard something outside the car. What? It sounded like a large twig snapping. It's probably just an animal if it was anything. If you don't believe me, then go and take a look. (laughs) I will if you will. I'm not getting out again. Where's your sense of adventure gone? It went when... It doesn't matter. Isn't there a prison near here? It's a low-category open one. So someone could have escaped. You think that might be them out there? Maybe. If they are out there, then it's not a good idea to get out of the car, is it? You think they might murder two complete strangers? No, but I'm not getting out now. I was teasing you. You don't have to be so serious all the time. I think I've good reason to be. I wouldn't want to be out here if I'd escaped from prison. We are out here, in case it's escaped your notice. We're safe enough inside here. Are we? Are we safe anywhere? I thought we were safe before. We did everything we could to stay safe during the pandemic, but still I... (gasps) What now? You must have heard that. No. What was it? (gasps) Please tell me. You heard that. No. Are you deaf? You must have done. It's right by the side of the car now. What is? I don't know. Oh, God, what is it? (gasps) Oh, thank goodness you're here. No, it's okay. I think I may have nodded off. Yes, it's just me. Yes, I'm okay. Really? It must have just been breaking down here in the middle of nowhere. I also heard something on the news about an escaped prisoner in the area. It spooked me out a bit. Frankie was played by Natalie Yates and Ella was played by Ruth Brennan. 
It was written and produced by Benjamin Peel. They're making their way up now, Cora. Good. It won't be long now, Kitty. Is the goat prepared? Bye. Let's pray for success this time. Eliza's scars will never heal. It is something we have all endured. She did not use the right technique. The fire should have been allowed to go down more. She was always a clumsy child. How is the fire? It will soon be at the right state. Where are they now? Hmm, they've just dropped out of sight. They will soon be here. Sound the horn. What was that for? What have you done with Jazz? Patience, my high protector. Why is there a fire up here? If any harm has come to her... Calm down. You've been far too quick to judgement. Ever since you got here. Is it any wonder with what you all believe? Is it any worse than anything else you've come across? <sighs> Probably not. And now you are here. And you have come without force or compulsion. I came to find Jazz. Where is she? All in good time. I am told you are armed. Please be so good as to surrender it. I should just shoot the lot of you. That would not get you Jazz back. Here, take it. I'm sure you won't mind if I remove the bullets first, though. Have you all just led me on a merry dance? We just keep you out of the way as we finished off up here. It has been months in the planning, though. It's the one day of the year that we lay aside our differences. But this year... We are blessed with having two strangers amongst us. Is this what this is? A ritual sacrifice? You haven't had a very good opinion of us ever since you got here. Can you blame me? I can't work you out. Or this place. It's not that difficult. We live to our set of beliefs. And have they stood you in good stead? Not always. But that is because of our sinfulness. Sin has nothing to do with it. It's to do with unpredictable weather patterns and all that we have lost. Perhaps there are good reasons for all that. I know there are, but our mistakes in the past should not dictate how we live now. But they do, don't they? I think you have seen much of it in your travels. I have. But we should try and look to the future, not the past. And not bring all this superstitious mumbo-jumbo back. Are we so different here? Everywhere I have been so far has left me bewildered at how fast we have regressed. We are just trying to live as best we can. But not always in ways to try and bring people together. But then, why should I be surprised? Whatever do you mean? Don't get me wrong. I have seen people trying to do good... But it seems even then they are punished for it. Even in the face of calamity, human nature shows us its worst and best side. But it seems I've mostly witnessed its worst aspect. Ah, here she is. Alex! Jazz, there you are, thank God. Are you hurt? What is going on? They wouldn't tell me. You'll find out soon enough. Thank you, Abraham and Roman, for bringing her here at the appointed time. Now strip off. You cannot make her do this. You will be restrained, if necessary. Our daughters examined you, did they not? They violated me. This is monstrous. I will not have it. Abraham, Roman, restrain her. I should have shot the lot of you. They examined you and determined that you are still a virgin. We have not had someone who is one, and an outsider for some years now. 
as you have seen, we do not live in harmony, but have fallen into wicked and sinful and discord with each other. This ceremony will cleanse our community. What ceremony? Why, the firewalk, of course. <laughs> Down there in the valley, you speak of witchcraft and curses. And up here, you're undertaking, what, some kind of pagan ritual? They both coexist with us. Witchcraft can be for good as well as evil. But enough of this. Is she ready? Yes. Then bring her forth. Walk briskly, but don't run. And don't dawdle either. That's not all that helpful. That fire still looks pretty hot. It's because it's dark. You must carry these through with you. And you must walk through three times. What the hell is that? Goat's entrails. Give them to Cora at the altar when you have gone across three times. We are here to give thanks to Baal this Midsummer Eve and to offer up our humble sacrifices to obtain his blessing on the fruits of the earth, which will soon enough be ripe for gathering. Sound the horns and drums. She's been through three times. Is she injured? Nay. No. Then the blessings of Baal are upon us, and we can rejoice. Release her and give Jazz her clothes back. You are most welcome to join in with us. We have more weapons in the car. We could go back and round them up. And do what exactly? We are on our own and they know it. After all they did to me and you think they shouldn't be punished. I thought they were going to kill you. And you gave up your gun. I thought I could reason with them. Would you have had me commit mass murder? If it were to save me. Would you have done the same? So we just leave? Yes. We can go and find the regional protector and make a report. But there are areas that we have trouble policing. Some places are a law unto themselves in this new world of ours. I don't understand why they believe in all that stuff. People need something to believe in, even if they seem to have taken theirs from a hotchpotch of notions. There's nothing more we can do here. None of them can leave this place. They are just as much a part of it as the land. They're coming back down. Let's go. Then. cleansing, the role of Cora was played by Karen Fraser, and Kitty by Lauren Harvey. Alex was played by Sarah Hassel, and Jazz by Katie Leonard. It was written and produced by Benjamin Peel. Hey, Billy, why do you look so down? Aw, oh, Dad, I got a computer, a PlayStation, and a barn full of iguanas, and I'm still bored. <sighs> Gee, Billy, when I was your age... I would read lots of stories in pulp magazines. Oh, with stories of weird adventure and fantasy, horror, satire, and lots of action. Wow, that sounds great, Dad. Yeah, I sure wish there was something like that right now. <laughs> there is Daddy-O. Who are you? I'm Dr. Mary Von Roxbrocket, host of the Twisted Pulp Radio Hour. And now there's... Twisted Pulp Magazine! <laughs> What's that, Doctor? Why, it is a return to greatness! Available on all your digital devices! 
That is what it is! Look! Whoa! Dad, this looks awesome! Exciting and, dare I say it, very unwholesome. You definitely have that right, my good man! Ha ha! <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Mary! My pleasure, Billy! And just between you and me, I am not sure that this man is really your father. Bye! Dad? Uh, uh, just read your Twisted Pulp magazine, Billy. Twisted Pulp magazine! Available in dark alleyways behind meth labs everywhere! Or at digitalvaudeville.com! That is D-I-G-I-T-A-L-V-A-U-D-E-V-I-L-L-E dot com!